Hello, what's happening? Hey boys and girls. Uh, really there's very little on my iPad when I look at it. I just like have a brief mention of something. Um, uh, magnetite and lodestones have been around for thousands of years and people are always marveled by them. They actually used to be insanely expensive quasi-magical objects because they would jump towards each other. So the ancient origins of the notion of magnetic attraction, a magnet having poles, and a field being around a magnet are as inherent as our ancient, ancient ancestors. And all three of those are conceptual reifications by empirical observations and entirely 100% incorrect. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Magnetism, by definition, is both a force in motion and centrifugal by nature. The notion of, A, a centripetal force is not only not a force, but the notion of uh, magnetic attraction is both absurd, insane, illogical, bass backwards, and just plain stupid. A magnet, of course, does not have poles. Defining polarity, of course, in full, which I've actually done in the third edition of my book, but define it fully in the fourth edition, or fully in the fifth and sixth editions, which I know they'll have to be, is rather easy, but I mean, humanity hasn't done that either. To think that something is located re there rather than pressure mediation, or the eoristostaya, sort of the incommensurability, which is a term that has been lost to the ages thousands and thousands of years ago, because when you talk about incommensurability or point non-specific self-similarity, like the holographic paradigm, where you take a holographic positive and you like someone's face right here, you can cut out a tiny section over here where nothing is in the holographic positive. Project a laser through it and the entire image will be present. In other words, the entirety of the whole is found within each and every part. And this, of course, is kind of like what people have in the idea of a fractal. But there is, of course, no pole in a magnet. If you took a magnet and were able to slice it like a hunk of salami, right down the middle, you will not have a North Pole and a South Pole. You'll have two magnets. You could just slice it a million billion times if you could, and each little slice will have a, quote, North Pole and a South Pole. So obviously there's no divider line there, block wall as it's referred to existentially and demonstrably, the denotation of the dividing line. It's specifically the plane of inertia. But it's a pressure mediation relative to the mass itself, where magnetism and the dielectric in the uh, conjugate geometry of the two, the hyperboloid and the toroid, work themselves out in pressure mediation. What's pressure mediation? It's like, well, you pull the drain on your plug, pull the plug on your drain, excuse me, <laughs> the water will fold down the drain. I mean, it's just pressure mediation. Same thing as plumbers say, water flows downhill. That's one of the first things that plumbers learn. Sounds kind of stupid and simple, but I mean, it's one of the funda fundamental aspects of plumbing. It's like, yeah, your pipes are kind of slanted upwards. That's why your crap isn't draining. <laughs> but a magnet does not have poles. You have to understand incommensurability, and you have to understand what polarity actually means. People say polarity all the time, and they say vortex. I love it when people say monopoles, because the notion of a monopole is as absurd as it is stupid. There's no such thing as a monopole. But a magnet doesn't have poles. People have to understand what the definition of magnetism is. Magnetism is specifically the dielectric field in manifestation due to the loss of inertia or energy, however you want to define it. Mother Nature doesn't deal with such things since she doesn't have words. She only has pressure mediation, force of motion, inertia and acceleration, capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, and dielectric primitivity. So there is no pole in a magnet. There is no such thing as magnetic attraction. You can even see this underneath the ferro cell with a supercell. I made a couple new ones over here, which I'm going to take to the Science and Energy Conference in July. These are really, really sensitive ones, too, by the way, and they're very easy to burn. Especially you stick a ring magnet underneath it. I've got, like, hundreds of videos on the supercell. Take a look at it. By the way, these are two pieces of glass, and the back is just black cardboard. It's kind of weird. We think of optical devices as, you know, you, you look through the glass, but the best way to view the magnetic field is just to piece, stick a piece of black uh, construction paper on the back, put the magnet underneath it, because we're talking about fields. The fields penetrate anything and everything. But there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. I mean, that's just BS. I mean, it's such an absurd concept. The magnetism is the force in motion divergence of the loss of that inertia if, and this is going to only be seen realistically on larger magnets, 
And people don't know what A, what magnetism is, nor what a magnet is. I mean, a magnet is a qualitative, not a quantitative nature of what we call a magnet, and that would be point source coherency of the, uh, all the geomagnetic uh, processional fields that make up the neodymium iron boron and the samarium cobalt or the ferrite magnet. There's no quantitative change in an object before it becomes a magnet and after. The only difference is the qualitative field coherency. Specifically, actually, it's point source. Um, but there's no magnetic attraction. That's dielectric acceleration, and it's not a force. It's actually the erasure of force. Specifically, too, and I knew this before I ever even knew that the ferro cell existed, and I wrote my first edition in my book. Magnets do not accelerate <coughs> towards each other. Well, sure they do. You take them there and they jump towards you. That is another conceptual, listen closely, because this is as serious as a heart attack if you actually want to understand magnetism, which some people actually do. They do not accelerate towards one another. You can see this underneath the ferro cell. They accelerate towards a no pressure point in counter space. You will see it underneath the ferro cell. There is a vort, I mean, as a simple analogy, that's not what it is, but you'll see a vortex uh, black void in directly in between the two magnets, and they are not accelerating towards one another, but towards that null point in the ether. If you actually understand that and the how and the why, then understanding magnetism becomes a lot easier. Magnets are not are are uh, fundamentally not fascinating because they have magnetism, which is the only thing that humans experience. Well, they accelerate towards one another, and if you try to put light poles together, then you know they push each other apart, and you know that's fascinating. People people don't understand a magnet is specifically a high level of point source dielectricity, a, point, a high point source of dielectric um, uh, field incommensurability that accelerates towards one another, of which necessitatively it must have a coherent, strong magnetic field. But that field only exists at the periphery. If you like take them, and they're, you can buy them, they're like $200. Say we have a, a disc magnet about yay big. They're about 250 bucks online. You think, well, this is the North Pole and that's the South Pole. Well, a magnet doesn't have poles and there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. You can actually test this with a Gauss meter. You could see it underneath the uh, supercell or the ferro cell. A magnet will actually have a black hole right here where all the light, since light is a uh, coaxial electromagnetic and longitudinal dielectric circuit, specifically it is a coaxial circuit, of dielectricity, electricity, and magnetism, where it has actually vanished right from the center here. This is the point of centripetal convergence. There's actually a vortex right here that where the uh, light disappears. That's not magnetism at all. If you actually use a uh, Gauss meter, you'll see a high point of flux right here. It decreases and decreases, and it, right towards the edge, it will rapidly increase. You could even take a, uh, a magnet like this, take a steel ball bearing, like a stainless steel one, one that's not easily magnetizable. You try to stick it in the center of the magnet, it won't stay there. It will, it will jump right towards the edge. Now, since a Gauss meter, now a Gauss meter doesn't test for the type of, uh, of uh, flux. It only tests for the level of that flux. A Gauss meter has no idea whether it's mag a magnetic uh, uh, counterspatial or uh, centripetal convergence, which is specifically dielectricity or whether it's centrifugal, it only measures flux. Okay, I can't tell you whether they're uh, uh, qualitatively two radically different things, centripetal or centrifugal. It only tells you the flux. Magnetism does not exist in the center of a magnet. Also, too, the world's most diamagnetic uh, element, bismuth. It's like, well, if you actually wave bismuth over a magnet, you'll feel a repulsion since it's diamagnetic or hates magnetism. In other words, it has incredibly low, actually the lowest in the universe, magnetic permeability. But on a single large magnet, you can even feel that. You don't need a Gauss meter. You'll notice that there is a repulsion right at the edge of the magnet where it's actually being repelled, but at the center of the magnet is actually being attracted to. It is accelerating. Well, this is the most diamagnetic element in the universe. Why do I have a disparity, two radically different things, on one side or pole of a magnet? The reason for that, each and every side of a magnet, there is not magnetism, specifically as a generalized statement. The magnetism only exists as the centrifugal edge. This is why a steel ball bearing will jump to the edge. You can see this 
with a feral cell or supercell, you can test this with a Gauss meter. It's incredibly high right here, it tapers off, and it gets incredibly high over here. This is the conjugate geometry of force and motion inertia and acceleration as expressed by magnetism as the toroidal force and motion, space creating, magnitude creating geometry of the loss of inertia. The only thing that gives volume, mass, and magnitude to the entire universe is magnetism. The inverse to that, this is the yin and yang principle, if you will, the conjugate nature, the true, point, the true inertia, the non-Cartesian, dielectric, counterspatial, ether, Mother Nature doesn't give a damn what the hell you call it, what stupid human beings call things. I mean, who gives a damn if you call it dielectric? Ether, inertia, non-Cartesian energy, zero-point energy, who gives a crap? These are all pathetic little names that human beings create to give uh, representations of things for sake of communication. At the center of that magnet is centripetal convergence. That is not magnetism. That acceleration, acceleration is the complete opposite to force and motion, which is magnetism. That's the geometry of the hyperboloid, or the hourglass shape, if you will. The superimposition of the torus in inverse is the, tor uh, is the hyperboloid. The hyperboloid in inverse image is the toroid. These two things form a perfect sphere. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. There's no such thing as magnetic polarity. Another thing is that magnets don't have fields. They actually cause uh, field uh, zones or pressures to occur in the ether itself. But a mag and this is also the reason for the hysteresis of the ether and the lag in the electromotive effect and the magnetomotive effect of electromagnetic induction. There is a hysteresis and a lag. The reason for that lag is because what is actually moving is not part of the system itself. It is causing a perturbation in the... Uh, in the homeostasis of the ether, of the field, well it's not a field, the dielectric, the unmanifest non-Cartesian field, we call it the ether if you will, but um, yeah, and magnetic attraction, uh, polarity, these are misnomers. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction, that's a pure absurdity. Um, I'm going to leave a lot of the uh, unique discoveries uh, and uh, secrets of magnetism uh, without videos until I'm actually done with my lecture in the first week of July, which is like a month and a half away. After that, I'll make all the videos in the world about it, but uh, I'd like to leave some things for the lecture. Pretty good idea, don't you think? Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, you can always click the link below, join my Patreon, tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy, you know, all that good stuff. Thank you. Goodbye. By the way, yeah, I stabbed my hand last night. Accidentally. With a really long needle. It almost went all the way through my hand. My hand is black and blue right here. And that needle went, oh my god, all the way, almost all the way through my hand. And oh crap, did that hurt. Uh, I even think I struck a nerve. Man, that was painful. There we go. Thank you so much. Goodbye.